join me on the quest to rotary reliability. Well, I don't always stack engines, but when I do, it has to be RX-8. Stay superior, my friends. <laughs> Hello, Isaiah. Hello. Dorian. Why are you building Ruthless, my style as a junior. <laughs> this video series is, is meant to show you what it's like to buy a cheap RX-8 and hopefully have an engine problem like this, which is the most common one, or a coolant seal failure, and what it takes to repair it as cheap as possible while still being in the correct realm. So you're seeing the end of it right now. Here comes all the rest. Everything's clean. It kind of took a couple of days because I'm lazy, but whatever. Well, the only thing, as you guys saw, that was wrong was the coolant seal. Fresh coolant seals. Bam, whatever you need, I got you. Do those work from an FD motor? Nobody cares about an FD motor. This is, this is, that's <laughs> I'll superior. remember that when you say this is, REW. This is superior chassis. Yeah, but the chassis isn't the engine. These feel different. How do they taste? Cool. <laughs> I actually messed up two side sill springs pulling them out because they were kind of stuck in there. So these small baby things, we only need two of them. We always replace an uh, oil control ring. Everything's cleaned up, good enough, you know. And all this cost me was $250 and I actually got a free steering wheel from my boys over there at Lucky 7. They said, you're handsome, you've always been supportive. We'll kind of speed through this part, but it is actually packing the rotors. We normally skip it just because it is actually very labor intensive and very straightforward. This is supposed to be a how-to though. This is, this is a how-to. A how to build, rebuild your Renesis. Okay. So we're gonna show you one rotor. Yes. And then we're gonna fast forward to the other rotor. One thing that I didn't do that you guys should do is mark the top of whatever rotor and mark where each seal goes because I was too excited and I didn't do that. And these RX-8 springs are kind of hard to clearance, but we're professionals and we don't care, so we'll go get through it pretty easy. If you are rebuilding the engine, like Isaiah said, keep track of this seal is on this side. There's six of each thing on each side of the rotor. So each rotor has six side seals. Each rotor has six side seal springs, which the springs don't really matter, but the side seals and the corner seals are the parts that you want to keep in the same triangle shape because they actually work with each other with that side of that face and a couple thousands is the noticeable difference when checking for tolerance. When you're rebuilding a motor and you don't want to mess with any of that, just keep it in order. We're just going to go for the kind of loosey-goosey clearance of uh, 0.006 around there. See that little notch right there on the side of this corner seal? That notch is what makes an engine worn or loose over time. And that is the tip of this side seal rubbing and making sweet, sweet love to the side of the corner seal. That eventually means that it can move back and forth on each side. And there's where your looser tolerances come from. So if you were to use the stock parts back and forth, it's of course going to have wider tolerances and, and have a little bit more blow by or whatever else comes with it. But that's about it. That's really all there is to it. When you put your side seal springs on, you want your end parts to go up, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. not down. There's a little squiggly line, like on the corner of your eye. You want the top part to be up. So not down like this, because it won't spring right. It's more so the idea is that if the squiggle goes down underneath here, there's a chance that if the corner seal is doing its bouncy up and down, that this little squiggle can get under there and they get crushed, and then that'll flatten the side seal spring over time and then you get less side seal spring spring a viewer that had recommended that a long time ago and it's stuff like that that makes this channel so successful to be honest is you guys watching out for us for those small minor details if i pick it up from the back side hold it like this you can see that all of these have that notch on the left side and then all of these have the notch on the right side harder notch oh shit and that's the three, rotation of the rotor. Yeah, three of them are on one side, three of them are on the other side of the, the rotor, which doesn't really matter. Halfway there now. Yeah. That does matter because if we put it on the other side, it'll be even harder to if you go clearance in. Yeah. At this point, you definitely have to commit to which rotor is the front and the rear. Whether it's front or rear makes a huge difference on the position of your oil control ring springs. So in this case, this is the rear rotor. So the rotor is spinning with this gear towards the very back of the motor. So that means that the intake's up here that means that then it compresses and then it shoots the exhaust out this way. So the rotor is spinning like this, which means all of the control rings need to have their little latches hook in this way to prevent them from spinning with the irons and not the rotor. There's no way you can fuck up the front or rear because the gear and the scalloping. Yeah, you're right. I think we have it backwards. <laughs> do we really have the backwards? I yeah. didn't do too much into it, but I think we do. This is the front. And this is the rear. Yeah, that is yeah. the rear. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. We got lucky. On these, they're scalloped. They are rotational. 
not just with the gear, but also with these shavings here. It's a new thing for me. His, the gear goes from the front of the motor, and mine, the gear's in the back of the motor. That's why it matters so much. They don't both sit like this. Keeping that in mind, when we do all the oil control rings, they have to go with the rotation, right? Yeah, we have to make sure that this little notch, this one right here, goes up to the control ring, and then this one goes down into the rotor, and it holds it. So if the rotor's spinning like this, it holds it from spinning with the motor, which is kind of wild. Since we hold it down, the only indentation we have is this right here. So that way, if I push this back, the whole shield doesn't move, you see? If it's not in that groove, and I push that back, the whole thing moves. There's no shame in stopping and taking a look at what's going on because you don't do this a million times a day unless you're a shop. And so what I'm looking at is this is the very rear of the motor, and this is the rotor we've designated for rotor of the rear. So I'm putting it just gently here. And you said that the scalping would be port opening, so the scalping's not there. Opposite way. When it does this, because it's too close off the exhaust. There's it right about to start doing an intake stroke. And there's it closing off, so that'd be the last second. We're gonna grab the original oil control rings, but something that threw me off big time is there's a third level of oil control ring, and it's got this wild little notch set up to it. The inner ones are my favorite. The no. outer oil control ring is kind of weird because there's no oil ring to it. It's just, yeah. it's like a spring, and it's just it's kind of just set in there, so you just slap her in there like that, and you kind of just close her in. That's it. The oil control ring that cracks me up is this, the middle one, but it'd be the outer one on an FD, because you're actually playing this game of hide inside the wheel. These are a bitch, and this is how it is OEM. There we go. I had to use my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> if it feels like your oil control ring doesn't really want to fit in there, that is exactly how it feels. It always feels like on the edge of just falling off, and occasionally they do. While I was doing the four rotor, you take a rotor, pick it up like this, and one just falls off. Make sure the notchy side, make sure that side goes bottom down. That's what those springs connect onto. Smooth side up. Man, that feels good with new seals. You do get kind of a rolling feeling once you like do get it to stay onto the side of the rotor. Yeah, because there's like rolls in there. Yeah. So there they are, they're sitting in there. But the new one to me is this chunky monkey. And yeah, it kind of makes sense. The notch goes over. There's straight up a little pin looking thing inside here. And the notch goes over. Wow, it does bend. Wow, it really bends quite. It's like a snap ring feel to it. Yeah. A lot of these are compression rings, like a piston ring. This one actually takes that step and goes a little bit further. That side was easy. Both of my oil sides are controlled. It is now time to test corner seals and side seals. Pinky's up, remember that? Pinky's up when you're putting the springs in. This is my first time packing an RX-8 rotor, and I don't like it. <laughs> this is kind of what I do, take like a bunch of parts, stack them all together, and see the odd ones out. I'm going to make an official recommendation to Isaiah that we replace any of them that are flattened. Like this one right here is pretty fucking flat. How many uh, spares did you get? I only got the two that I needed to replace. And the proper arc shape owner would do. That's right, at bare minimum. We're putting corner seals in because then that creates the triangle of all of the side seals. This is where you'll start seeing lube coming out because things like this want to fall out, especially when you have it upside down. You're kind of using Vaseline as, as a glue, a very, very impermanent glue. If that starts getting to you, walk away. Don't let it upset you because building a motor has to be 100% solid. Something I really like to do when I'm coming across used parts like this is I actually will put all of them into the same slot and be like, ooh, that one's pretty loose. And I'll actually start organizing them. That one's also pretty loose. And I'll, I'll start... They're all pretty loose. <laughs> Ultimately, hopefully I'll find one that's like too tight. Uh, that's even more loose. Okay, so this is going to just get worse and worse. I'll stack them that way so that way when I go to find and feel out a another one. Here's one thing about RX-8s, is that they're graduated like this, and so if you have it up, it's gonna push all the way out to the back. So if the curve is like this, it's gonna sit on the outer curve, and then your tolerance is gonna be really loose, but as you push it down, it is actually gonna bring it closer to the, the thing. So you actually do have to push all the way down, and they're so really loose. The most important thing you can do on a used engine is make sure that they're all equal. So you don't wanna make one side or one rotor the tightest, best of everything and then the other side is so loose 
that it has the lowest compression. You're actually gonna try to mix these all in evenly so that way the motor has even compression and lasts longer consistently. Yep. Now that we've done one side, and again, we've done it all evenly, and the way we're measuring, we're getting about 12 thousandths. And of course, you'd have to push everything down evenly and make sure that, so I'm aware of that part, but the measurement that we're making, we're making them all roughly 12 thousandths when they're that far in. So we're gonna go ahead and goop these up, flip them over, and do the other side and see again if we can keep it all pretty even. Remember, when you put the Vaseline on there, there's still no guarantee the seals won't fall out. So you have to say, that's not going anywhere. Then you'll be okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a, a trademark secret. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> you ballsy. <laughs> I told it's not you're, going anywhere, you're right? Man, it, you're a man of your word. Listen, thou shall not go anywhere. <laughs> that's because you said it all white like. <laughs> that's exactly what you get. We've now got both sides of all rotors all done up, and they're all pretty equal. I suspect that that's the most important thing right now, putting together a used motor. That's not going anywhere. That is not going anywhere. I think we're ready to actually stack the block. You guys could find an engine stand and put it on an engine stand, but today we have a bucket from Lowe's. I like that it's blue. Just you go ahead and lube up the surface, some oil, some spit, whatever does it for you. Swap it right in there. That's step one, put the rotor down. Step two. Kind of just drop right in there. Maybe just a little blop down where it all used to be. You don't need a lot. Check the vibe. Put a little blob of whatever silicone you have. Just like right there. All this do is doing just to hold the seal in place. It's not to actually seal. Just finger right into place. Probably is no different. Probably is just smaller housings and smaller rotors. Smaller e-shaft. As long as they don't go anywhere, as they shouldn't, we should be fine. So far it's looking good on my side. This side's a lot easier because it's not going upside down. I always make sure to connect this up to the outer seal so that way the oil pan is sealed all the way from this bottom seal all the way to the legs down to the oil pan. So that's a very important nice little thing. And it holds the outer coolant seal just a little bit more. Same thing on this side. So here we are with the apex seal. The tips, little nibs as I call them, are glued to the end of each of these. And then those will end up going on the top so we can control and watch them. Then there's two sets of apex seal springs. There's the large one and the small one. The small one actually controls just the, the, the large chunk of apex seal between those two notches right there. And this large one actually does produce a lot of the apex seal spring force but it actually separates these two from each other. There's a, that angled piece right there that it slides on. And so it's also trying to create a compression, you know, sort of seal outwardly too. When that super glue breaks off, and it breaks off very easily under combustion, your apex seal sliding outward and on this edge to try and seal every which way possible. So it's kind of neat why there's two sets of springs. Push that down a little bit. Do -do -do -do. And so, just like that. All at the same time, we'll push them down because they're already creating a force pushing the rotor, which could cause the lower corner seal to uh, have issues. You want to make sure that you have all three kind of equally pushing the rotor equally. How you many times do you want to say equal? Yeah. I want to make it equal. <laughs> you want to make the equal times you say it equal, equal? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I have to. You, start, you guys start somewhere. Look calm me. The young Ron Jeremy. <laughs> you gotta move it up a little bit more. Is that the front side? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Did you leave the, uh, that? No, no, it's okay. So now you have to pop it back up. You have to pick it up like that. We'll do another visual check of all the seals. I didn't mess them up. We don't want to over compress the motor because then seals can pick back up when everything uncompresses and then they'll pop out. So we want to leave it right there. That's how you gain bang. <laughs> I don't really do silicone like this, but since this is like an upside down procedure, you kind of need to. I also kind of like the idea of just no fucks given. Honestly, I'm going to say it right now, this doesn't run 
It doesn't matter because we'll just have a, a turbo waiting for it somewhere. <laughs> Somehow, some way. As he is encouraging the fast and, and loud or whatever. As, as like long that. as you guys support this enough, it, it will happen. You're going to have an army against me <laughs> petitioning to <laughs> recognize this as a car that needs a turbo engine. Doing all the doweling, I've gotten like obsessed about which side's which. We're good. So far, so good. And off. Right there. It's that even pressure you gotta yeah. put on it. Sometimes you just need your board to lube you up, you know, before, <laughs> before you go in. All right, you, that's not going anywhere. That is you not see? going anywhere. You can do it. There you there go. go. Oh, there we that. go. There we are. Before we go any further, the rotor vibe check. This rotor fucking moves. Murder everybody in the room. <laughs> what do I do? Include myself, trust me. <laughs> you gotta do the Illuminati triangle. Okay. Uh, one out of, oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. You know, I don't always stack engines, but when I do, it has to be RC. Oh God! Stay superior, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell he doesn't believe his own bullshit. Yeah, I don't believe him. Okay, let's let's watch for any coolant seals. Nothing, nothing coming up. That's not going anywhere. Literally, it's well, gonna it, stay right here. Yeah, for say, it, be, it better not be frozen. So all in all, <laughs> I've only spent two hundred and fifty dollars on coolant seals and O rings and uh, the two. Tight so springs that I've messed up taking out. And minus the time and the effort and the tears and the sweat. That's all that it took was $250 out of my pocket. Let's make sure it runs. We're gonna go ahead and put the dowel bolts in, the little tiny ones. I've been wanting to do this because I never do it on my own motors and you are the first time I actually get to think ahead and put... No, I don't want that. No. Yeah, you do. No, I don't want that. You're getting it anyway. Every single one of mine, I forget to do this, and then I try and do it after the bolt's halfway in. It is the worst dumb mistake I keep making. Star Trek State's going to run great and not leak coolant because I can do this. Hey, you want to start slapping those in there while I film? I'm just going to watch it. Okay, that works too. This is your moment. Look at that, that color. That's neochrome, baby. Neochrome. Look at that. Our sevens don't come with neochrome bolts like that. I'll tell okay. you that. Coolant leak written all over it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this is. This is just cool factor, JDM. That's how little I care. <laughs> <laughs> you do want a torque wrench and anywhere between 20 and 30, honestly. I, I go to 33. Isaac can do whatever the fuck he wants to. I'm gonna go to 36.8 because that's the setting on here. <laughs> For reference, when you're building like a race motor, I like to do a round of lower and then another round of higher and then the finals. I just did that. That was a low one. Fair enough. That, that was set in one. Fair enough. Yeah. Now that he's gotten all the bolts on, it's time to check the end play. Yeah, that's a <laughs> solid <laughs> half inch movement. Gotta let those rotors walk. Those yeah, puppies dude. need to get out. That is not the correct end plate measurement procedure. Everything on the front has to go on. This is what sets the end plate right here. This is the little, what's it called? That makes it tight and loose. That goes right there. And then when you tighten up against that, then it allows the rotors to move in a certain way. That just goes in there like that. So the oil pump is there now. If you guys aren't a part of the Patreon, I feel bad for you because we've been talking to them this whole time. I just wanted you to say hi to everybody, okay? I'm getting a lot of questions. What are you doing with the RX-8? I hope you turbo it. Hybrid motor this, 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 that, that, that. This is meant to be as realistic as it can be to a regular person because not a lot of people could afford a four-rotor, three-rotor, rotor sub Corvette. I want to bring a realistic aspect to, uh, to the people out there and actually bring back the superior chassis. If I was on crack, I mean bang, this would have been done in 72 hours. Why aren't you? 
because I, I care about my health and I'm saving that for the SEMA push. <laughs> <laughs> this is meant to be as realistic as possible. Hopefully you guys could appreciate that. And when this thing actually goes, I will probably have something fun for you guys. But I mean, in the meantime, I'm gonna do something just uh, cheaper, kind of like, um, I don't want to say it's like most YouTube stuff, but it's gonna be kind of like most YouTube stuff. Yeah. I want to bring you guys something fun. I want to have something that I could just do some stupid stuff to. Like, you know, <laughs> that's all I want. I just want to do the rest stuff with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> more properly torqued than it was coming off. You should put that on my testicles because you're driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. First of all, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my boy Jake. He sent Doritos. Mind you, we're not uh, related to Doritos in any way, but the engine is. And Jake, thank you as always, but this engine is now a short block. I got pulled away from working on the all-wheel drive four-wheeler to work on this. Now, he wasn't doing anything that important. This is one step above an LS swap. <laughs> Are you saying that a uh, stock swap is more talented than an LS swap? That, yeah, actually, I will say that if you, if you do an engine swap with, with, <laughs> with the stock <laughs> engine, <laughs> That takes more talent than going and swapping to some ass clown engine like the LS. Wow. Especially a junkyard one. That thing should be here. Yeah. But his here. engines are hurting. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> this RX-8 could beat his car right now. I mean, I bet you it'd be more reliable. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, race number three and then nothing's coming up. Anyway, uh, we, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the RX-8 engine. We did it not on the cheap, but on the right. This is for the people out there that keep on asking me, dude, so I get an RX-8, engine's not running. This is exactly what I want you guys to do. You see me with the thousand horsepower, you see all this other crazy stuff, ignore that. This is where I started. I started with a 1988. <laughs> You're not that cool, I'm sorry. <laughs> I started with an NA, two rotor. I started with an 88 GXL, second gen, no cool turbo two hood scoop, none of that. It was relatively inexpensive, just like these are, and I earned every step of the way, and that's what you guys need to do too. If you start at the top and try to work from there, you're gonna get tripped up on the worst things and you're gonna look really bad doing it and everybody will make fun of you. No joke, they will, and you won't get the support you do. But when you come from this level and work your way up, things are totally better in the community. So Isaiah's gonna do this while I go hide. I and... thought you were gonna talk about the depression of being at the top of your game, but no. That, that yeah. depression's way better than the depression of being at the bottom and not having a running engine. Damn, okay, sir. I wasn't... Give me an hour. <laughs> Give me an hour. When I said it, I wasn't referring to you Yeah, specifically. okay. Dickhead. Uh. <laughs> I mean, now that okay. I, I, I wow, I, that was a Freudian slip. Yeah. Just that that whole sentence just came out on accident. You, you didn't hold it in, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of passive aggressive, huh? It's, it's got kind of too long of a weekend. <laughs> We're down the board. Damn. Hours, I, I need to go to therapy. I, I got some anger. I got some aggression built up. That's not good. <laughs> that wasn't meant for you. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, no, I, trust me, trust me. I, I know what's meant for me. Okay, and okay, so. Not that, but I mean, if you're really talented and extremely lazy, and as soon as you have just enough, you stop working on your own goals. Okay. <laughs> That's not about you. No, it's not about him. Fuck off. You put this shit in, okay? <laughs> hey, good night. I quit. I quit. <laughs> one thing that's kind of important and not a lot of people who know and they kind of struggle with, is always try to jack up your transmission because when you're putting your engine in, it's at an angle. Your transmission is sitting down like this, your angle is like that. So if you jack up your transmission, you kind of get it, it makes it easier to put the dick in the pussy, you know? None of Rob's cars have under tray. I still kind of hit right here, so I'm just gonna uh, pull this out a little bit. That's an extreme fender roller. See how strong I am, Rob? <laughs> this is some leftover stuff I had from my Beamer that I'll just you know throw in there. This thing takes uh, seven quarts, so if you drain the oil coolers, which I did. And then I also have a brand new oil filter. I have all that good stuff going in there. Filling up with coolant. Let's just hope everything's okay and it's not filling up to the combustion chamber as we speak. I think that this might still 
overflow because I, I don't think this is sealing properly. This is all fucked up anyway, so I need to get a new tank. I hope you guys are ready because I am ready to start the car finally. I wasn't as excited earlier, but now I feel it. And uh, I just want you guys to come on to this, uh, this road with me to rotary reliability. If you want to do the honors and, and put, plug the battery in. Okay. I'm, I'm your electrical guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I heard something. There. <laughs> Amazing first first round. And I'm gonna put my, my breaking starts on it. <laughs> A little bit smoky. Yeah, just a little. Join me on the quest to a rotary reliability. This is peak. The smoke, that, that's just a fact. That, that is... Fuck it. I don't even weld anymore, I rebuilt. <laughs> Chilling with the boy, you know. I had to give the little, the little rotary diddle between 27 and 23% throttle. And you know, she just... That starter, that, that my RX-8 starter is, they made that badass because they knew that motherfucker was going to be working. I just want to make sure that that clears up. It is clearing up, but yeah, it's all stuck in the catalytic converter and, and over time with the rebuild, you know, yeah. it, it, it took so long. It is clearing up, it is clearing up, I just, I just. I, I want to point out that this has been a week and a half, you know, with, uh, with weekends off. And we took a whole engine, took it apart, rebuilt it. Some people I know can't even replace the trans in that time. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who's he going? Oh, oh no. That boy's gonna run for another 20,000 miles. You guys see that? It sounds like the valves are tapping. I stopped leaking too, so that was just some ridiculous water. That's much better. I just want you guys to know that I, I might be reckless, but I'm not like jump on it without even checking the engine, make sure it's healthy. <laughs> oh my god. This is genuine reaction right now. Well, if it blows, I just want to point out that I did not do the entire engine build. I'm like, I have a disclaimer on this. It's coming straight for me. Yeah. I can't tell exactly which part is straight for what I'm like. Probably the, uh, I did 5,000 RPM on zero miles check engine light code. Who cares about that? That's, that's how they work. The exhaust is hot, so that's good. That's good. Take it around the block. It. You guys, that that's the start of the RX-8 love. You see, you see, the little like if he's an F1 or something. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> that, that that's it. That, he's hooked. Done. I did it. A mission accomplished. Yeah, that coolant tank is for sure fucked up though. Two things. One, you weren't lying. There were cops over there with the lights on. <laughs> yeah. Right in the parking lot. And two, that's fun. Got it. That's fun. I, dude, I'm so happy for you. Man, that is so cool. That I am so happy for the situation. Happy for Isaiah. This is truly an example of, you know, 200 bucks in coolant seals, and you've got a good running car, assuming that you can pull the engine and do all that sort of stuff. Hopefully in these videos, we show you how to do that, or at least feel enabled to do it, because it is, and that's where you could get the Cheap Arc 7 for cheap if you plan this Eight. process. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, no. You, yeah, you, cheap RX. You, you, you get the cheap right. RX seven, right. RX eight. You get the cheap RX eight for cheap. It's the cheap RX seven experience with the RX eight. So you, don't have, you don't have to spend RX seven money because it's not RX eight. Yeah, you don't even have to spend RX eight money as long as you're ready to rebuild the coolant seals. 